Okay, this video is about how much protein do people actually need. And by that we mean what percentage of calories do they need for protein. Now, Dr. McDougall has a great lecture called Protein Mastermind Lecture where he mentions that human breast milk has about 5% protein. There's different numbers on breast milk, you know. Um, some papers say anywhere from 6 to 7%. It seems to be that it averages out in most articles at about 6%. Okay. And it stands to reason that's the most rapid phase of growth is a neonatal newborn phase when they're nursing with their mama that the rest of their life they're going to need less protein than that. Okay. And then there's good reason based on epidemiology data. Sort of a, a good population to look at is the Papua, Papua New Guinea uh, Highlanders. Okay. And they eat almost entirely sweet potatoes for almost their entire diet. diet. They end up with about 4.4% of their calories from protein. That's 4.4%. Um, that's only about 25 grams of protein per day. And they've got normal hemoglobin, normal serum albumin. That's the protein in the blood that's an indicator of the body's overall protein status. They do extensive physical work. They're healthy. They're muscular. Um, there's almost zero obesity. They're free of heart disease, diabetes. And then uh, according to Pritikin's book, by the way, this comes from the Pritikin Promise. I wrote the page numbers on here. So up here, the entire summary of protein requirements is page 454 to 473. Um, this stuff on the Papua New Guinea Highlanders is page 460. This guy Pritikin was a genius. I mean, these are old books, but they're fantastic. He gets right to the point. He's really smart and concise. This one's from written in 1982, the Pritikin Promise. Okay, so anyways, um, there, he mentions that they were virtually free of breast cancer and colon cancer. That's very interesting. That's relevant. A lower dietary protein intake, especially lowered animal protein intake, uh, markedly reduces the risk of cancer. That's not widely known. That's good to know. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, the Mr. China study and all that, he's written about that rather extensively as well. Um, Walter Kempner's diet, he started the patients out on only a 4% uh, protein, 4% of their calories from protein. Okay. And by the way, these are really low numbers. The reason I'm giving you these numbers is you're going to hear all kinds of nonsense. If you go to the famous university medical centers, they will say endless amounts of stupid stuff. They typically will recommend, you know, fish and all this other stupid stuff. You know, salmon, for example, is a good thing. It's 50% animal protein, 50% animal fat. It's a terrible food, a terrible food. You really don't want that. And what I'm trying to say is incredibly healthy people eating less than 5% other calories per day from protein. Um, so Kempner was only feeding them 4% protein for a total of 20 grams of protein per day. Kempner wanted to lower dietary protein intake because many of his patients, especially in the beginning, were uh, kidney failure patients. And the main job of the kidney is to excrete nitrogen. Nitrogen only comes from protein. There is no uh, nitrogen in carbohydrates or in fat. Those are the three micro macronutrients, okay? Fat, carbohydrate, and protein. Um, so when he was feeding a 4% protein, that was only 20 grams of protein per day. He typically would start out on 2,000 calories per day. Then if the patients were bigger or were losing weight, he'd give them, uh, for example, just sugar, table sugar, sucrose, to increase their uh, total caloric intake. And um, he'd also sometimes give them fruits. He really was focusing in this point uh, to protect the kidneys from nitrogen. Um, so if you look at four calories per gram, there's four calories per gram of protein. So at 20 grams of protein per day, um, that's 80 calories from protein per day, 20 times 4. With a 2,000 calorie total diet, that would be 4% of calories from protein, as we just said. And if you give them sucrose to get their calories up to 3,000, they'd be only getting them 2.6% of their calories from protein. There's also a study for treatment of kwashiorkor, you know, the, the people that were starving with the big belly. And this researcher named Golden, M.H. Golden, he successfully cured these patients, 66 of them, by just feeding them a, a, a diet with only 2.5% of the calories from protein. These are incredibly low numbers, only 2.5% of calories from protein. Um, and here's the reference to the paper. If you want to look it up, Golden from 1982. title of the paper was Protein Deficiency, Energy Deficiency, and Oedema of Malnutrition in the Lancet. Okay. Uh, volume one. So why am I telling you this? Because it's impossible on any naturally occurring diet that you could be low in protein. Forget about it. Americans are always focused on the wrong thing. They want good fats. No, there's no such thing as good fats. We talked about that in a separate lecture. They want to get their protein. No, you want to l minimize your protein as much as you can. In general, 
the minimum, and especially animal protein. Animal protein is different than plant protein. I have a whole entire recent separate lecture on that, the one called amino acids for health and for biochemistry class. Okay, um, the other thing too is when you eat more carbohydrates, what happens is your liver will use some of that to make glycogen. And then it can burn that glycogen to maintain blood glucose during the fasting phase, like overnight while you're asleep. And this will lower the need of the body to use amino acids for gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis means to convert amino acids into um, glucose. And normally the body will do some of that you know, at night to maintain your blood sugar levels. So the point is when you eat more carbohydrates, you can use these carbohydrates to do that instead of using the amino acids. So you lower your protein dietary requirements. Okay, so the key point of this talk is that Plant protein, oh, I screwed up. I should have wrote plant protein there. Plant protein is more than adequate to supply all your dietary needs. You don't need any animal protein, not one drop, not one bite. Um, it's impossible to be protein deficient on any naturally occurring diet. Uh, we talked about the real protein. The real problem is animal protein. Animal protein does all kinds of bad things. We talked about how it is different than plant protein. It's amino acid composition. It increases the risk of uh, cancer. Um, it, it activates like a growth factor anabolic phase. And you don't want excessive cell replication. That's what cancer does, excessive cell replication. It's also atherogenic. It increases uh, blood total cholesterol. It increases the risk of atherosclerosis. It just puts the body into building mode phase. The only time a herbivore physiology person, you know, like a human, um, would be eating animal protein would be mama's breast milk uh, normally. And I realize all external populations, they all eat a tiny bit of meat, the healthy ones. Uh, you know, they typically eat, you know, three to five percent. But for, you know, somebody who's eating a Western diet through their youth, they're overloaded in iron and so many other toxic problems. You want to go zero animal uh, products. That's what McDougal recommends. That's what T. Colin Campbell recommends. That's what um, Esselstyn recommends. That's what Neil Bard rec Bernard recommends. That's what I recommend. That's what Chef AJ recommends. That's what, you know, Dr. Klaper recommends. That's what the, you know, the best of the best nutrition doctors, they all recommend that. 100% plant foods, zero animal foods. Uh, there's a guy by the name of James Mitchell, PhD, very bright guy, who uh, has done research suggesting that protein restriction is even more important than caloric restriction for longevity. As soon as you go vegan, you tend to lower your overall caloric intake. You tend to lower your body weight. And his research suggested that lowering your protein, the percent of your calories from protein, also has a significant boost in longevity. Okay, so anyways, hope that was helpful.